introduce uh, diagnostic radio pharmaceutical, like mainly diagnostic radio pharmaceutical, and Min Sok Sok uh, close with his presentation. So, what is the diagnostics? As you know, that uh, I think that this concept already we uh, used more than 70 years. Every every nuclear medicine, every members in nuclear medicine department, they know that because of iron one thirty one therapy is the typical example of the diagnostics. So, if that uh, pharmaceutical, uh, especially radio pharmaceutical, gather and stay there and then therapy there. So, and we can see even we can after. Uh, Injected or followed uh, radio pharmaceutical, we can detect uh, with image. So, I think more than 70 years uh, experience that diagnostics uh, people need other targets. So that's why uh, I think one one uh, pioneer from Germany, his name is uh, uh, Professor Richard Baum. He, he did. Uh, Great efforts for diagnostics, for uh, especially for uh, somatostatin receptor imaging and therapy. So I think it's, I think 1990s start from he he I heard that he start from 1990s early 1990s. I visited uh, 2007, uh, almost 10 years experience that these those. Diagnostics, and I think that almost one decade, he, he did a, only solely he did a only one. So after his uh, effort and uh, so many people who worked together with uh, Dr. Richard Bam and he, he, they uh, make made uh, another hospital, especially Austria, Switzerland. So then. Netherlands, even in Netherlands, then uh, widely spread. After the uh, South America country, Brazil, Uruguay, several uh, countries devote their report to the diagnostics, especially for somatostatin imaging and therapy. And maybe this is the next step. Uh, for uh, diagnostics, so we call that is a PSMA diagnostics. So you can see the PSMA 11 uh, invented from the Heidelberg in Germany, uh, and then they used the uh, PSMA 617 for uh, rotation labeling. Uh, PSMA 11 labeled with the gallium, and they used the diagnostic image and then <clears throat> if we can see the disease spot then we can try to rotation uh, label the this PSM compound. So we call that uh, there are no sticks. I think this terminology I think early nineteen twenties already our uh, colleague in the group Kevin National they made this concept. Ready. Uh, why this uh, graph you can see here? I think I, I never seen. I have never seen this kinds of uh, drug uh, invented for a cancer patient. You can see here more than uh, six five five percent of the therapeutic. Uh, Efficacy than the normal uh, treatment. So, as I remember, that uh, any any other uh, cancer, chemo, or radiation, or any other therapeutic uh, tool cannot make this kinds of uh, achievement. So they said that uh, if if this compound can get the Nobel Prize or uh, huge money, 
Then I, after one month, I I heard that uh, this compound was sold to the Novartis more than four, 30 point something billion. And I don't know that he, he could get the Nobel Prize, but I think so later. After pet uh, inventors, uh, especially for FDG inventor, Tachu Ido and then Michael Phelps will get the Nobel Prize first, and then maybe there are no things. And I uh, always Google it. If somebody, uh, what are you doing? Or what, what's your uh, job? So I explained, I, I uh, did this kinds of job. So as you can see here, so many multi meta systems. And after one or two treatment, in, in this uh, time, uh, this uh, figure, three times of actinum therapy, then all cancer is gone. So, so everyone they uh, saw this uh, image, then they was uh, they are they were frightened. They never seen this kinds of uh, drug. So that's why our future is in uh, diagnostic is is uh, our future. So uh, also we have a. Uh, uh, another uh, candidate for a PSM targeting agent, and also almost the same uh, biodistribution with the PSM level, and also we uh, try to make a rotation label for this PSM target agent. And after one treatment, one cycle of uh, actinium therapy, then PSA level changes dramatically, uh, but I think I know that uh, after this uh, publication, we, we found that still actinine therapy, even rotation therapy has uh, uh, therapeutic efficacy, uh, therapeutic benefit is uh, more than fifty percent, but still fifty percent remain for a non responder, but. Uh, after that, actinium covered more than uh, 20 or 30 percent, and uh, almost 80 percent is covered with the uh, diagnostic uh, this, uh, benefit. But uh, still, there are non responder made. So we have to figure out that thing for, for treatment of PSME targeted patients. Uh, here you can see the uh, several graphic uh, radio metal, especially for ethereum and rotation and uranium and copper, 67 and escatin, bisphosphate and actin here, and also one more uh, PB 212, uh, 212 uh, will be the listed in, in this uh, table because of that chemistry is more uh, effective than the actin 225, but we don't know. We have to compare that uh, actin 225 and uh, PV lead uh, 212. It's no later. And that matched the pair of the therapeutic radionuclide. You can see the copper 64 or a copper 67, and indium or gallium will be the uh, matching pair for rotation and actin. Uh, and also technetium 99 m will be the matching pair for uh, rhenium-188 or rhenium-186. So what, what is the radium nuclide therapy? What is the difference from the uh, external radiation in therapy? We, we use the radium nuclide and uh, we inject it or we put into the human body, then uh, radiation will be happening inside of the body. So sometimes we uh, 
can use that iodine 131, just like iodine 131, we can inject or put, administer with the naked radioisotope. But sometimes we uh, should chelate or make a carrier to reach the target site. So you, as you can see here, radiation external beam uh, therapy will uh, damage to the normal tissue. But I think uh, if the targeting is uh, happening properly, then only a, our uh, internal radiation therapy will make a therapeutic effect, not, not harmful effect for a normal tissue, theoretically. So here we can see the consideration factor for a radium applied therapy. So we have to select the proper uh, uh, radionuclide or even uh, for a theranostics, we should choose the proper uh, batch pair for a therapy and diagnostic uh, radionuclide. And also we I think that, that this is the major uh, hurdle for, for radionuclide therapy is the targeting. So targeting is a major uh, thing for a, a radio, uh, therapy, uh, theranostic radio pharmaceutical. And also that is related with the effectiveness and to uh, toxicity. And also the stability is very important for a uh, therapeutic radio or pharmaceutical. So we have to consider that the uh, chelator with the proper stability for a radio applied complex. And also uh, this bioactive molecule that is peptide or protein or small molecule antibody, they can uh, make a targeting to the disease tissue. Or sometimes we can use a nano carrier. So I think uh, cost also very important for uh, uh, even uh, for us because of in case of ethereum ninety uh, traffic for uh, you know that the antibody label the ethereum for lymphoma uh, lymphoma uh, one treatment. Uh, uh, costed uh, around uh, twenty thousand dollars, especially in Korea. I don't know your situation, but uh, twenty thousand uh, dollars in in case of Korea, I think ten times. One one patient, uh, he got the ten times treatment, but uh, of the he passed away after ten treatment. But I think. Uh, that means uh, more than uh, $200,000 is spent money. Uh, I think $20,000, not so expensive for, for US or, uh, or uh, richest uh, country in, in European country, but I think uh, still that is uh, quite uh, huge money. Or one treatment. So that's why uh, we we will develop our own uh, research reactor that uh, ethereum, in case of ethereum can make uh, less than two thousand dollar for one treatment. So especially for ethereum, less than one thousand dollar per treatment. So after year of two thousand twenty-two, if we can get uh, a new research reactor then will produce uh, types of radio look like such as a genome composite seven or addition. So cost is also very important. Uh, as you know that the alpha beta OJ emitter can be used for radio look like therapy. And also, you can see here that from iron 131, ethereum, mutation, venom, and latium. Uh, latium, yeah, latium. 
uh, in case of beta, they uh, their kinetic energy is so high, and also uh, that beta mass. Beta is an uh, electron, so their mass is uh, very uh, light than the alpha particles, so uh, they can fly over a few millimeters. But in case of alpha, uh, only 100 micrometers damage it to the digit tissue. But I think, uh, I don't know why, actually, earlier we expect that uh, if uh, alpha ready nuclei, they have uh, efficiency to the uh, therapeutic tissue, they, that radio pharmaceutical should get into the cell. But in case of uh, alpha therapy, uh, so just the surface uh, uh, membrane targeting, PSME, other uh, targeting protein is on the surface of the cell, that, but still we have a good efficiency than the beta. So uh, we have to figure out that thing because of the, that is the bystander effect or other effects, but, but still we have a good therapy effect uh, than the beta. Uh, OJ electron, they should get into the uh, DNA. So, so I think I don't know. The, it will uh, overcome this uh, shortcomings, but I, I think uh, alpha. You should know, uh, understand, know that uh, beta and alpha, then the OJ electron. What is the best? Radionuclide for therapy. So we don't know. We don't know. Uh, because of, uh, we, we can control the dose, dose symmetry. We can control the dose for uh, one patient, one treatment. So uh, you can see here, in case of ethereum has a high energy and a short half-life than the iodine-131. Uh, so simply just multiply these two. Then in case of me, just multiply these two and then they have almost the same uh, therapeutic because of the two multiply three is a six, and the six multiply eight is uh, around five. <laughs> so I think that almost the same result. But uh, they said that it, in case of ethereum, they have a high kinetic energy beta, so uh, that is good for a huge size of uh, tumor. Then, in case of lutetium, lutetium has a uh, longer half life, but the uh, energy is a 0.3 mega electron volt. So uh, that means uh, small size tumor, good for a small size tumor than the ethereum 19. So already they published that this kinds of uh, theory. But uh, in normal case, in, 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 in uh, Dr. Richard Baum said that uh, there is no differences. He, he said like that. But in case of ethereum has a s more toxic to the kidney because of that beta range uh, passed through the uh, outside of the kidney cell. So uh, they will, uh, ethereum will kill the kidney cell then. Uh, so in case of rotation, there's a very less toxicity to the kidney cell. So he said that almost the same, but I think rotation will be the better choice for uh, the PRT. And also you have to consider that uh, uh, stability. You can see here, uh, CG250, that is the specific uh, antibody, they label the iodine-131, uranium, lithium, and potassium. Then uh, they cal calculated the, uh, the absorbed tumor dose uh, from the uh, image or biodisciplinary study. They said that in case of iodine, is a 76, but I think uh, uh, lutetium has uh, 800. 
So you can see here more than 10 times more doors to the tumor. So that means uh, you can see here in case of rotation, they use the DTPA. In case of iodine, they use the, uh, the simply uh, uh, tyrosine residue they can detect. So as you know that iodine 131 is labeled to the uh, benzene link that is a very unstable. So stability is very important for development of uh, radionuclide therapy. So I, I think almost all the uh, metallic uh, radionuclide, they should uh, use the chelating agent. So sometimes they test with the peptide or protein. So we call that is bifunctional chelating agent. So the chelation part is the very important for stability also. Sometimes even linker, uh, with, uh, they have uh, peptide bond, then that should be uh, clipped in the uh, blood. So we, uh, we should consider that, uh, that stability of the linkage also. Uh, normally, uh, acyclic chelator, so open arm chelator, can make easy to a uh, complex more easier than the cyclic chelator. So we we uh, can make the room temperature reaction, and but open arm chelator stability is not good. But uh, cyclic chelator. Uh, we have to increase the temperature, but the stability also good. So we have to consider that the uh, stability of the complex formation chelators. So uh, nowadays, cyclic chelator is preferred from the radio cancer because of uh, they use them. I think almost all the radio nuclei can be labeled with the DOTA. Uh, in case of us, especially for uh, a diagnostic uh, radionuclide, we use NOTA. That DOTA has a uh, 12, 12 ring size, NOTA has a 9 uh, ring size, so 9 molecule, 9 atom ring size. So uh, DOTA has a bigger size than the NOTA. But in case of us, copper, gallium, indium, uh, that is very stable and also room, te room temperature uh, production of complex uh, uh, with the no time. So, uh, especially for us, uh, diagnostic agent, we can use no time. Therapeutic agent, we can use no time. So, you can see here several different types of uh, chelators already reported. Uh, in case of rhenium, we we can use the uh, N2S2 or other metal nuclide can be used uh, actinium or rotation or lithium can be used for uh, DOTA and sometimes uh, diagnostic purpose we can use DOTA. Especially for a targeting molecule, we can use any kinds of any other uh, molecule can bind to the uh, uh, therapeutic target, then we can use. Just uh, simply, uh, we can use the linkage with the, that bioactive molecule, then we can make the chelator uh, structure. So any other small molecule or peptide or antibody or protein or really, uh, just a nucleotide, then we can make a therapeutic so just uh, you can Google it. Uh, then if you want to make a uh, new types of radio pharmaceutical, then you can simply uh, just like a digit type of pancreas tumor, you can see the so many list of the small molecule, peptide, antibody. Then simply you can uh, test with the uh, diagnostic or therapeutic. <coughs> Uh, ready to apply them, that will be the diagnostic. So, but I think that still we have far way, way to go, but I think we can just start from that early.
Uh, how about the cost? In case of each room, as I uh, said that uh, uh, earlier, I think uh, 10 years earlier, uh, that cost is uh, uh, $14,000, but nowadays at uh, $20,000 per one treatment. In case of lutetium, it's almost the same, but the slightly cheaper than the lithium. But uh, rhenium, one does only $500. So very cheap, and also uh, uh, produced by the from the generator system. Then uh, I think a venue will be the best candidate for theranostic radium nuclide. But over the world, you cannot get a radium generator nowadays. So I think uh, maybe. Uh, uh, Gijangno, new research reactor can cover the tungsten also, then can make ourselves, our country. So, uh, as I remembered, I, I, uh, I joined uh, our hospital in 1998. At uh, that time, Prof. Jamin Jung uh, just started to develop the new radio for Renum 188, and because of that, uh, therapeutic uh, efficacy will be very good, would be very good, and also they suggested gamma radiation, so we can see, so that Renum 188 is the itself uh, theranostic uh, radionuclide. So all I, as I mentioned, that the generator system can get uh, Renum 188. Uh, first of all, we labeled with the DTPA, and because of that, DTPA can visualize the kidney function, and also we, we simply mixed with the uh, DTPA with the radium 188 after the concentration of the radium uh, concentrated radium solution then we can label with the DTPA. Because of that DTPA, uh, uh, after injection of the random DTPA, that will go to the kidney and uh, uh, excrete it to the bladder. So we think that after making the uh, li liquid field balloon, that is a uh, bracket uh, therapy, for, especially for balloon for blood therapy. So if the balloon is left ruptured then uh, at, right after the, the uh, this radio pharmaceutical is going to the uh, unit to so we'll get uh, get out of our body. So so we designed to make the random DT for uh, uh, bracket therapy. And after that, we can make we could make a, a random DTP, a random HDP, or palliation bone pain, palliation of the bone pain, bone meta metastatic tumor. So we did uh, several uh, experiments for anim animal study. Then we can see the almost same distribution with the technician and the random. And also, we did the patient treatment for bone palliation. So after MDP scanning for a diagnostic, and we can treat with the random HDP. And after that, we can make a, we could make a random T-colloid for a radiation sinovectomy uh, or a direct tumor injection like that. And in case of, especially for a, a radiation sinovectomy, we have a good response rate, more than 70%. Uh, and I think uh, uh, that uh, stopped uh, year of 2001 because of the one legal issue, in, in especially in Korea. So uh, I think uh, sooner or later, our hospital can do the another uh, clinical trial for uh, this 
variation xenobacter. And sometimes we can make a, a renin labeled paper that the denim tin colloid can uh, filter it, and then they remain the, 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 on the filter, then we can patch on the disease tissue or tumor site, then we can directly make a tumor treatment for these types of materials. And next one is the radium HDD because of uh, lipiolol is a uh, they use the this is the CT or X-ray contrast agent. It can mix with the renum long alkyl chain tagged with the renum, then we can mix it, and then we inject it into the uh, liver artery. Then they reach it to the tumor, especially for hepatocyte uh, carcinoma. Then we can treat for the HCC patient. So we did an animal experiment for that uh, injected into the liver artery and they, that radio pharmaceutical is retained in the liver. And after that, uh, our compound can could be used as a uh, new radio pharmaceutical for a multi-center clinical trial that is supported by the IAEA. And then out of 76 patients, um, almost 90% has a stable kidney. That especially for a liver cancer patient, they, they ha had no uh, therapeutic uh, tool for that stage. Then we use this uh, radio pharmaceutical then Almost 90% stable disease means a very good radio pharmaceutical for a cancer patient. Uh, in case of Korea, we cannot use this one because of we invent. Uh, 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 I'm and Professor Jamin Jung also inventor for this radio pharmaceutical, but I think a legal issue uh, because of legal issue we cannot use our Korea patient. Uh, next one is PSCMA. We, we use uh, these types of uh, glutamate and urea and lysine uh, detect uh, PSCMA targeting agent. So uh, right after the PSCMA 11 was invented, and then we start to focus on this project, and then we searched the uh, so many research papers and patents, we cannot see the structure of our own. Structure is not in the list, so so we got a patent for this structure. Uh, just a simple uh, lead tagged with the nota and dota. And in case of nota, we can use the gallium labeling, and dota can use the potassium labeling can make a theranostasis. Uh, so we did the uh, uh, animal model study. You can see the efficacy of this compound. And finally, uh, we did a comparison study with the PSMA 11 in India. Same patient and one day in interval. Uh, they use the gallium PSMA 11 and then make an image of the gallium, uh, our own compound. So almost same pattern, but the uh, uh, slightly low background than the PSMA 11. So we hope uh, our compound will commercialize with the Selbion, our collaborator company. Our hospital, so uh, almost same structure uh, with the gallium GUL. So I think uh, we hope Lutetium 177 also has a good targeting efficiency. So we, we can 
in the Kali language, which the Tishma they would guess in Asia. Uh, as I mentioned, that Kalium uh, rotation dotatate has a good uh, result for a uh, therapy of uh, neuroendocrine tumor. As I already showed that this one and Tishin also focused on the, uh, Germany and the Australian group. They make a new Teranos agent for PS, uh, prostate cancer patient. So I I use this slide uh, in 2011. They has they have planned to make a new research rate in the southern part of Korea. Uh, at that time, year of 2015. Uh, postponed several times, so finally we could get uh, the new research rate in the year of 2022. Hopefully, mm -hmm. there, if there is no other obstruction, then we can get. But still, that energy is not so high, 20 megawatts, not so high, so I think it, this uh, research reactor only for a uh, uh, Radio isotope production so can make molybdenum uh, uh, 99. I, I think main main purpose is the molybdenum 99 for uh, uh, technician 99 and generator. And the other purpose is the rotation, indium, and any other kinds of therapeutic radio applied can produce from that side. So I think. Uh, this is the, just the start point, point of the new radio uh, nucleide production. So, just uh, uh, beside this complex, we could make uh, kinds of radio pharmaceutical company, especially Jelbion uh, or Samsung or Seal, new new uh, industry, Korea. They will make a, a radio pharmaceutical complex here. Then. They could make a labeling kit or new radio pharmaceutical for treatment, so they can import, uh, export to other country. As I mentioned, that uh, Renium 188 generator will be the good uh, potential, but uh, we cannot get now the world, all over the world. But uh, after making tungsten. 188 and then can make a uh, random 188 generator. Earlier, already domestic uh, production was made from our uh, domestic company. They said that uh, uh, one generator is a $15,000. I think a, this, almost one year we can use for a treatment, so not so expensive. And also, they have a uh, good uh, illusion profile. All your Oak Ridge uh, uh, generator, we have to concentrate for uh, the many 188 itself. Then, but uh, in case of Kairi product, it has a, a very uh, short uh, illusion profile, so we can get uh, almost 95 percent of the uh, volume of uh, 3 ml. So that is good for uh, labeling chemistry. And as I mentioned, that rotation can be developed by the cellbion. So SNH can support the development of the SNA agent. So finally, we have to, still, we have a uh, there were problems, so for uh, therapy of uh, thera theranostic uh, radio pharmaceutical, we have to consider that the uh, imported radio pharmaceutical, then, then already they have a, a safety and efficacy test already done. 
then we just set up those treatments uh, to our hospital, our country. Then uh, patient uh, treatment will uh, be good or better than the earlier conventional treatment, then we can get reputation for uh, uh, okay, radionuclide therapy is uh, better than the other conventional therapy. So then uh, that is good uh, public relation, will be the good public relation. And also, uh, as I remember that the uh, ethereum jebali, Ethereum Jevalin, if there is no treatment uh, remained, then we can use Ethereum Jevalin treatment. But if that is the first line therapy, we change it into the first line therapy, then uh, therapy efficacy is very increased, it's very uh, dramatically increased. So we have to consider that the uh, first line therapy for uh, radionuclide therapy and also uh, solely used radio pharmaceutical that's not good so we, we have to consider the combined therapy so chemo and uh, radionuclide therapy, or surgery and radio, just like a uh, 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 cancer after surgery after the surgery we can use the radionuclide so that's all is there any Question or comments? Okay. Hello. I'm here. Okay. I think that just before our uh, class, I, I uh, said that therapeutic radio pharmaceutical will be the, our future. Without this tool, our department will be gone. Uh, because as you know that in case of FDG path, will be changed from the uh, specific uh, uh, equipment ju just like MRS or MRI I think a low, low frequency MRI then uh, within 10 or 15 years so FTG path will be will gone so how can we survive therapy therapy or therapy uh, radio pharmaceutical will be the future of our department Okay, thank you everyone. I think uh, this is the last class for me. I think uh, after three weeks, uh, I'll join. But then uh, from next week, uh, Professor Hong Yun Che will cover the AI related things. Also, some means of so get microphone. Okay, thank you everyone. <clears throat> thank you. Hello everyone. So today I will uh, discuss about therapeutics and nuclear medicine, and I think you have heard of some uh, pharmaceutical uh, issues in the therapeutic agents.
and today I will discuss uh, more focus about some recent uh, uh, recent approach in diagnostics and like recent clinical trials ongoing tri clinical trials will be discussed here so first this will be the news recent news that as these all news articles have uh, some common uh, uh, common aspect uh, as Professor Yun Sang Lee had told you before that these kind of uh, radioactive drugs are emerging and they are making a storm in the market and as you can see uh, this will be the number that uh, Professor Yun Sang Lee previously said uh, 3.9 billion dollar was uh, paid by Novartis for the Lutathera treatment and there are more uh, right now uh, radio pharmaceuticals on the market or that are in the late stage development and first of all for this uh, session I would like to uh, share two uh, most representative cases of diagnostic which is the uh, PRRT uh, for neuroendocrine tumor and also radionuclide therapy uh, for targeting PSMA so for the first part is about neuroendocrine tumor and there is a increasing uh, size market, also market size for the neuroendocrine tumor treatments and I think these kind of uh, somatostatin analogs for our portion will grow uh, with this kind of market size growth and right now there are several therapeutic options for the neuroendocrine tumor the primary will be the surgery and others will, will be the target therapy chemotherapy somatostatin analog and PRRTs and these are drugs that are now clinically approved and used in the clinical situation so what kind of uh, trials that have been done recently uh, here and there are many uh, trials uh, uh, now uh, summarized here and I'll just briefly show some uh, clinical trials the first one is about the um, uh, clarinet study which showed a which compared the uh, lanoltide compared to the placebo and next one is about the evolorimus which uh, the radiant 3 trial and it compared the uh, evolorimus compared to the placebo and they sh showed a uh, significant uh, effect in the survival third one is about our study which is the netter ones uh, study and in this study they uh, they found out they're using the lutetium dotatate we can achieve or higher survival uh, progression free survival and even the overall survival so with this kind of uh, studies we uh, finally got a FDA approval last year for the Lutathera treatment so with all these uh, previous clinical trials there has been some consensus guideline for the treatment of a neuroendocrine tumor with advanced or, uh, or distant metastasis so as you can see uh, after like after the surgery and after uh, distant metastasis you see there are many treatment options that you can take so you can consider a long-acting uh, uh, octreotide or lanoltide or you can have a choice for a local regional therapy PRRT or evolurimus or uh, interferon therapies uh, however 
yet there is no single uh, guideline which uh, therapy should come first or which therapy should be uh, chosen. So there are uh, upcoming studies that we should consider. Uh, the first is about the broadening the indications and second is about comparison with uh, other uh, targeted therapies. And some new uh, therapeutic strategies are on validation, such as combination therapy and selective intra-arterial injection, alpha emitters, and somatostatin antagonists are also in for the new therapeutic strategy. So for the comparison between the evolorimus and lutetium dutatate is now on ongoing for the clinical trial and it's phase 3 clinical trial named as COMPETE trial and 11 countries with 30 multi centers have participated in this uh, trials and I think this uh, uh, in a recent moment there, the result will come out and we can find out what uh, and then it will be more clarified whether uh, what kind of uh, treatment we should take first, like compared to the targeted therapy, whether these PRRT should take uh, uh, in first, will we can uh, get the information with these trials. And then uh, regarding other uh, uh, therapeutic strategies, there are ongoing uh, studies about first thing is about the combination therapy and there are uh, quite a lot of uh, clinical trial now on to design the combination therapy combination with the gamma therapeutic agents or combination with targeted agents such as PARP inhibitors or like recently there are attempt to combinate with the immunotherapies and these kind of uh, in the background of this combination therapy is that these kind of therapy like for the for the combination with PARP inhibitor it seems that these PARP inhibitors can make the tumors more radiosensitive and combination with the immunotherapy has some background of that these uh, radiotherapy can make a tumor environment more susceptible, susceptible to the immunotherapy. And second is about the selective intra-arterial injection. As you know from the uh, like uh, therospear or therospear, there is a attempt to selectively uh, chose the lesion and give the intra-arterial injection for the patient with liver metastasis. And compared to the intravenous uh, injection or intravenous uh, therapy, it might have better effect and low risk for the other normal organs. And also there are ongoing studies regarding the alpha particles since there is some reports that uh, the alpha particles will have better effect compared to the beta particles such as, such as lutetium or yttrium. So this is, there are ongoing studies. And also there is some reports about the somatostatin antagonist. Uh, all the past uh, lutathera or lutetium dutatate agents are the uh, somatostatin analog, uh, derived from the somatostatin analog. And, but like theoretically, this somatostatin antagonist were not used for the therapy or imaging because uh, these antagonists does not internalize. However, uh, from the literatures and previous studies show that these antagonists show higher uh, higher uptake in the tumor because there are more receptors for these antagonists and also although these antagonists theoretically don't internalize 
there was uh, no difference or lower clearance rate compared to the agonist. So right now, uh, there are uh, studies to show whether these uh, antagonists have better effect in both imaging and therapy. But there are also concerns we should always think about is about the response evaluation. So right now, although we do the PRRT, uh, there is no uh, right uh, criteria to do the response evaluation. For the clinical trials, we use the resist criteria as a main response uh, evaluation, but uh, resist also like radiology, radiological evaluation cannot uh, best predict the outcome of the patient. And, but also uh, using the Calium dotatop or the neuro uh, imaging agents for neuroendocrine tumor cannot also be effective because <clears throat> after the treatment, if there is a decrease in the like gallium dotatop imaging, we can uh, interpret it as both. Uh, we can interpret it as it could have a response in the therapy, or however. If there is some change in biological change after the therapy, we can like more uh, if it changes to the poorly differentiated types, these kind of uptake can also decrease. So it is hard to make a response evaluation. But nowadays there are recent studies regarding the gen uh, uh, they are uh, making. Uh, some information from the blood and doing such a gene test uh, can give more precise uh, information about the response and I think you may find some literatures regarding these response evaluation using the blood samples and next is about the patient selection you sh we should consider who will be the uh, <clears throat> Who will have best response for the therapy and this is also like blood tests are also gene analysis are also used for this kind of patient selection and the third part is about the personal personalized dosimetry and there is also ongoing studies for the personalized PRRT for neuroendocrine tumors uh, next is about the prostate cancer and there is also these markets are growing and for us the Asian market although it's not much as a North America the prevalence is not that much but uh, there is a growing uh, number of patients in the Asia Pacific area regions so this was the study about the PSMA, lutetium PSMA reported in the Lancet from the Hochmann group and they show that this PSMA therapy has an effect in reducing the PSA and as you can see this primary endpoint was 50% uh, of PSA response and also they saw some uh, effect of this treatment. So further, they have further gone on for the clinical phase 3 trial which is named as the vision trial and here they will uh, compare the lutetium PSMA uh, therapy with the supportive care and versus the placebo of best supportive and best standard of care. And here they will for the primary endpoint, they will see the uh, progression-free survival and overall survival. And next, uh, there are several other clinic ongoing clinical trials. Uh, mostly, I think these studies take place in like Australia or in America right now, and the 
first upper row is about a study regarding comparison with a toxin chemotherapy agent compared to the low tissue PSMA. And the lower part is a pretty uh, similar study regarding a lutetium prostate uh, agent for the prostate cancer patient. However, uh, compared to the uh, upper uh, previously mentioned studies, this study has uh, quite a different indication criteria. Uh, so this patient all include patient after hormone therapy and also patient who have done the chemotherapy, toxin agent chemotherapy. But this group, in this group, the patients are uh, indicated or recruited regardless of the chemotherapy. So we might see whether this can be used as a second line therapy for the prostate cancer therapy, I think. And also like, as I mentioned, like in the neuroendocrine tumor for Rutathera, PSMA is also on clinical trials for the effect of combination therapy. And as I have previously mentioned, there is a ongoing uh, uh, trial com with, uh, which has uh, done a combination with the PARP inhibitor and also there is a uh, combination trial with the immunotherapy. Now, yes, so this is end of my uh, presentation. Yes, if you have any questions, please uh, ask me. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, we will end this session today. Thank you very much.